The Volume Weighted Average Price, or VWAP for short, is an incredibly popular indicator that shows the average price of a security adjusted for its volume. The entire purpose being to provide traders a smoothed out indication of price and an idea of whether the stock is currently overvalued or undervalued. Today we'll be quickly going over how the VWAP is actually calculated and how you guys can use it in your trading. Now beginning with the formula itself, VWAP is calculated by multiplying the cumulative typical price by volume then dividing by cumulative volume. The typical price being the high price plus the low price plus the closing price of the time period we're measuring then dividing by 3. The cumulative volume being the total volume since the trading session opened. This then would continue with every additional candle being added to the previous one. So again, it's basically just the average price of the stock for the day adjusted for its volume. Now looking here at our chart, if we actually wanted to add this indicator to our screen, we would simply come up here to the studies icon in the upper right hand corner. From there, we would then just come over here to the left hand side and actually search for VWAP, then we would find it and hit add selected. Once I actually have it over here on the right hand side, and here you can see it's in the price section, which means it's actually going to overlay the chart itself. If I wanted to edit that study in some way, I could always come over here to the gear icon on the far right hand side. This is where I could then change some of the inputs like the standard deviation lines, or in my case, I'm just going to come down here and make the line a little bit thicker so it's easier to see. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll simply come down here and select OK and hit OK one more time. So now that we actually have the VWAP line on our chart, looking here at the indicator itself, you'll notice the VWAP line appears as the center purple line. The upper and lower bands to either side are going to act as our standard deviation lines, specifically a two standard deviation move. Two standard deviations basically means that 95% of the price action will take place between those upper and lower bands. Now as for reading the indicator itself, remember the VWAP virtually acts as the average price of the stock for the day. So when the price of the stock is below the VWAP line, it may be considered undervalued. When the price of the stock is above the VWAP line, it may be considered overvalued. However, I'm not really a big fan of the term overvalued and undervalued in this context as it most definitely does not mean you should be entering a short or long just because the stock price is above or below the VWAP. Really those terms of undervalued or overvalued are going to apply to large institutional traders and they'll use that as a reference point before placing their trades. Many institutional traders will actually utilize the VWAP in their trading to ensure their trades do not move the stock price too extremely in either direction. Remember, institutional traders may place very large trades that could actually have an impact on the underlying share price. To avoid this, they may stick to selling shares when the price is above the VWAP, so to them being overvalued, and then they may only enter into a long position or buy when it's below the VWAP or considered undervalued for the day. And ideally this is done to avoid artificially inflating or depreciating the share price just because of a large order. Now because institutional traders use this as an indicator or as a benchmark, it's generally considered as a very influential metric for intraday trading. For example, many may choose to only enter a long position when the price is below the VWAP, or only enter a short position when the price is above the VWAP. However, many others view it quite a bit differently. Instead, they're looking for the stock to remain above or below the VWAP for an extended period of time and using that as an indication of a bullish or bearish trend. They'll then use the pullback to the VWAP as a potential entry point. This is because the VWAP line will often add a dynamic level of support and resistance. When the price of the stock is above the VWAP, it's acting as a level of support. When it crosses below the VWAP, it is now trending below the VWAP line, it may become a resistance level. Looking here at Lucid, you can actually see several different examples of this where the stock price has risen, touched that VWAP line, and then had a nice little pullback after reaching it. So it was acting as a level of resistance. Now on the other hand, if these levels are broken, they may also act as entry points themselves. For example, if the price were to break out above that VWAP line, we may use it as a potential buy signal or a trend reversal signal. We then may use that upper band as our new resistance level. Vice versa, if the price were to break below the VWAP line, we may view that as an indication of a short term downtrend and enter a short position. Again, looking here at this Lucid chart, we can actually see where it did break through that VWAP line, and again, that would be our potential buy signal right there, an indication of a potential bull trend, or it's reverse that downward trend. Now, of course, there are going to be many other ways that you guys can use the VWAP line, although I will mention I have rarely seen anyone successfully use the VWAP as a standalone indicator. 
but rather in conjunction with another indicator, like an exponential moving average line to gauge the overall trend, or an RSI to distinguish a potential oversold or overbought condition. But I think you guys get the idea of how the indicator is used and how to calculate it. Again, it is definitely not perfect, and like most studies, I don't think it can be used in solitude to make your buy or sell decisions. But it is an incredibly helpful metric to keep an eye on. There is absolutely no question that institutional trade desks will use the VWAP as a reference point to base their trades off of. So it's definitely something we need to be aware of. After today, you should all feel a little bit more comfortable in the uses of the VWAP and some ways to incorporate it into your trading. If you guys have any questions for me or recommendations for other studies you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that wraps up today's video on the VWAP. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.